should enjoy life. Welcome to the show, Doctor. How are you today? Thank you. I'm good. I'm good. It's Thank good you. to see you at 79, <laughs> looking, uh, you know, good, healthy, and more importantly, happy and content. Yeah. Um, it's normal for most of us to feel that once we reach a certain age, then it's downhill from there. Whether it's, you know, we see it in the movies or even read about it, yes. hear it from friends and family. It's almost like it, when you reach your retirement age, mm. then that's it. Mm. But uh, you say that that shouldn't be the that case. That shouldn't be the case. Because age is a number. It's just in your head. It's not physical. I mean, mm. the fact that we have a life to live, that age depends on you, whether you want to be uh, 90 or whether you want to be uh, 10, it's up to you completely. It's the way we think about it. And purely because we look around us, we see old people huh? after they work for maybe up 50, 55, and they retire off, and then you find them fading away in life. You know? you, if people work like that, then naturally your lifespan also becomes that. But if you get away from all of that and think, hey, I want to. Tomorrow is another day, I have to do something about it. If you start thinking like that, like tonight, tomorrow what I'm going to do. As long as you have this concept, I want to do something tomorrow. Not I want to live tomorrow, no? I have this to do. I have still unfinished tasks to do. Mm -hmm. then you keep on living as long as you want to. It doesn't mean there is a limitation to this. It's up to you to decide. You know, lately they issued a small little study. The age of a man, 117 years in Japan. Why is it that people of that age still live? When I was a young boy, I came from the Second World War. Now, the, the retirement age at that time was between 50 and 55. Mm -hmm. And then the 60s came, and then they raised the retirement age. To me, what is a retiring age? That, that's, that's my concept of it. So I decided at a very young age, I am not going to retire ever. 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 So the question is, to <coughs> retire or not to retire? Yeah, exactly. And the answer is plainly yeah. on the wall. Yeah, it's on the wall. It's up to you to decide. I mean, people think that you cannot move from one job to another job. That's all total rubbish. Whatever you love to do, whatever you like to do, you have the, all the time in the world to learn about it and make it happen. Absolutely. And it's just like uh, what we saw earlier with the Prime Minister yes. saying he would like to credit CNN for that video that just that has just been released. And that video also inspired today's program yes. to really think about the group of people who unfortunately for various different reasons after reaching a certain age yes. uh, get thrown into a little box. Yes. And you yes. know, either they, uh, they decide to just um, uh, live the days away yes. or decide that well this is it for me yes. the end is near yes. um, but uh, the, the question is in Malaysia what are the options uh, what do you do once you reach okay. your retirement age? Okay. In my view huh, as far as Malaysia is concerned it doesn't have an avenue for all these people who have all the knowledge and skills you know see are two things huh? information is not knowledge okay Knowledge is something that that person develops, right. and with that knowledge, he develops a skill. This knowledge and skill is by his own, that belongs to him. Now, these people, they have accumulated this knowledge and skill. These skills and knowledge are not put to good use right. after a certain age. Because they're now, full of experience. Exactly. But in other parts of the world, they have places where these people can go and contribute. Like, for instance, as an example, a university prof platform as an example where you can go and give a talk or you know there's a place for it you have to make that because we don't have that platform other places they have it suppose let's say let's say a mechanic as an example who's very good at his work and he now is 60 years old and his company says well you must retire he can automatically go into a, the university and teach the engineering school about motor engineering i mean they can learn the theory he can teach them the practical way how to do it better and with quality. He could do that too. And why is this the case uh, here in, 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 in Malaysia, in our nation? Uh, because if you look towards the West, it just seems that those who have this uh, vast amount of, uh, you know, um, amazing experience are being put to good use, yes. whether it's even in the broadcast industry right. or, uh, you know, in, in the professional industry. Absolutely. I'm a really example of that. We have people like you all who were in the radios and in those days up to now, they suddenly faded away and all of them are gone. Look at the amount of wealth of knowledge and skills they had, which could actually be used by the younger generation of today. 
But what has happened is they've been faded away, and, and there was no industry in which they can get into mm -hmm. a private industry or private place in which they can use that knowledge. What I did instead was whatever I accumulated, whatever I've learned, I wanted to teach people. I know there was no place to do that, so I did it on my own. I teach them every day, every month. I go out there and talk to people. And, and not for money, you know. Mm -hmm. I tell them how to lead a good life, how to manage your life. Our Prime Minister is a very good example. I quote him all the time. That's I mean, right. I mean, the fact that at 93 years old, no other human being in this universe has ever become a Prime Minister. <laughs> and there is no one has done it. And I don't think it'll ever happen, okay? But he's done it. And in a very troubled situation, you That's know right. what I mean, okay? Uh, absolutely. So if he can do it, so can you, so can I. I mean, if you think like that, and now ne next thing is, how do I live up to that age? You have in your hand that tool, and the tool is only two things. One, <laughs> exercise every single day. And that's what you say is, has been consistent yes. with all the different kinds of uh, lifestyle expert gurus and yes. positive living gurus. Yes. They all say the same thing. Same thing. Not only that, they have taken the trouble to study, to prove this concept. And they have found out even people with mental problems, people with psychological problems, people who had injuries problems, all these people were put together and did a study. The one that woke them was exercise. Mm -hmm. One form or another. It could be just simple rowing. Okay? And the other day I was watching her little video, an 84-year-old woman every day rows a boat also. And she, she runs. Okay, but so, not everyone can, can do that amount okay, of vigorous sure. exercise. But you cannot deny that everybody can walk 20, 30 minutes a day. And it's as simple as that. As simple as that. Mm -hmm. I walk every day without fail, okay, at least a minimum of five kilometers every day. I do that. Okay, how long does it take? It used to take me less time before. Now it takes me about an hour and 15 minutes. But if you do it casually, as if you're walking in the street, buy yourself a treadmill, you can do that too. Right. Or become a member of some gym, you can also do that too. Yeah, the options if not, are there. Yeah, if not, just walk around your block, you know, yeah. in the place where you live, okay? And you said there are two things, so okay. besides food. imperative exercise, yeah. food. food. What we eat is important. And how much we consume is also important. You see, we have a stomach which can consume anything, mm -hmm. and the quantity is not. See, we eat too much and we eat things that are not very healthy. So how do you do, how do you balance between the two? Eat until you're half full, is a common statement, okay? My view is like that. <clears throat> Whatever you take on a plate, eat half of it. That's all. Simple as that, okay? Don't eat full. Otherwise, you have a discipline. You take enough for it. So what you eat, the quantity that you eat is important. What you eat in that quantity is also important. And the quality as yes, well. of course. Because I think that has been compromised a lot, especially in our yes. modern day living. I'll give you an example, okay? Doctor, do you think we have been unfair to the older generation, to senior yes, citizens? Yes, absolutely. We've been very unfair. You see, it's not very few people are like me. I decided that I will stop working mm -hmm. for someone by the time I reach 40. That was my original objective. I couldn't do that. I did it at 45, but they wouldn't let me go. So I worked for another two years. And then I out of the no more. Then I started to do what I wanted to do. This privilege I decided on my own. Nobody coaxed me. The reason is because I felt that if I'm going to work until I'm going to die, it's no point living. I must have died now, you know. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, heaven is here. So, in, in that process, I decided that I want to contribute to what I think. I know I can go to some institution or government. I said, no, I will do it what I have. Whatever I can do with myself, I will do it. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of people can do that too, no? Right. So, we have been unfair to these people because why? They have depended, like, as if the, the government or the country uh, has been their father and mother. And then they, we use them up to a certain point, and then we drop them dead, you know. And imagine some of these people who have retired when they were 55, you know, they have, maybe, they, by now they are probably 80, 85, okay. What are they doing? What kind of life they are leading? 
come on, who is paying for the expenses in terms of medical care and all that? That's right. You expect the children to do that? No, la. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it could have been possible in the old days, okay? But things are different now. In yeah. this current moment, it's expensive. And also there's so many things mm. to do these days, post yes. the internet yes. and, you know, with, yes. with sure. social media sure. and whatever you want. All that is very good. But here is something that even <laughs> our Prime Minister said, you know, you must keep your mind occupied. And active. active. And you have the secret to this. You, yes. you have that uh, answer. Which is, which is what I discovered myself mm -hmm. at a very young age. Okay? See, we constantly there are thoughts running in our mind. It runs on so wild, you know. Because these are things that we absorb from the time we were born by right, to the five senses. And these thoughts are accumulated by our brain. It's sitting there. And constantly it is talking to you, talking to you, talking to you. The more you allow it to talk, the more it will spin. And every time you tell a story, you will tell it differently. The same episode will be told by you in different, different format. That's right. So it's the same thing repeating itself. The voices in the head. Exactly. Yeah. So I have found this simple formula. And that is, every time some thought comes into my head, I write it down. And I have a system of doing it, meaning everything, every thought that comes to my mind, I write it down. I try to make my mind totally empty. Okay. It's not possible, but you've got to try. So and the, the good thoughts you, and the bad thoughts. Everything. Mm -hmm. Even negative thoughts that you have. Take it out, put it down. And then try to understand why you're thinking like that. The moment you question yourself, why am I thinking like that? And the answer will come. Then you realize that you are the creator of that negative thought. You're not somebody else. So it's three steps. Read, write, review. That's what yes, you say. That's right. Okay. Read. Always do this, okay? When you read somebody's book or somebody wrote an article, you read about it. As you are reading it, your thoughts will be related to what you saw before. But if you convert this and say, hey, how can I apply this in the future? See, we, we, we have the past and we have the future. There's no present. People talk about you are in the present. You are never in the present. You are a, the present is moving mm -hmm. because remember we started a few minutes ago. Now we are in the future already, all the time. So you must take the past, what you have learned, and then use that past knowledge to say, hey, how can I use that past knowledge, and how can I make it even better into tomorrow? When you think like that, your intelligence will slowly creep in and give you some ideas, provided. You are not blocked by these thoughts that are coming from the past. That's why the writing part is so important. And on a daily basis, you don't try to do too many things. Huh? Right. I say three things, okay? Mm -hmm. Morning, afternoon, night. That's a M lot already. A -N. <laughs> <laughs> Morning, afternoon, night. M-A-N. Yes, it. man. That's right. So achieve that. One could be for yourself, at your work, at your home, your family, whatever that is. You try to achieve that. Then, one thing you must do, every time you do something, ask yourself, could I have done this better? Is there another way to do it? Can this be improved? Constantly ask yourself. This is keeping your mind active all the time. A simple technique. No need to go to a college to get a degree on this. Mm -hmm. Just do it. You know, on, on, on that note, this morning, afternoon, night method brings about the, the question about time management. Yes. And it just seems that, you know, whether you're retired or or more so when you're not, there just isn't enough hours in a day. And that seems to be the complaint everyone has. Yes. Um, how do we counter that? Because you, of course, are an expert in this area. <laughs> it's because most people see the time as not a limit, but a long thing. Meaning, whatever I want to do now, I'll do it tomorrow. The tomorrow exists. In my case, I have a deadline. I don't know whether I'll be awake tomorrow or not. So whatever I gotta finish, I gotta finish it. I have a system in which I plan my entire I'll give you an example and okay. show you. And you have an organizer <laughs> here to prove it as well. Okay. See I have a, a, a simple thing like this again. Just to show you. <laughs> simple thing like this. A daily planner. Well not exactly well yeah, two things. It has got a daily plan of what I want to accomplish. And another one called a in a month. These are the number of days that you have. And you're very organized with it. You were highlighting it. I have from 6 a.m. in the morning yeah. to 10 at night. Can you possibly keep to this schedule? Uh, yes. In most cases, I can. 
-hmm. About 80, 90 percent of the time, it'll happen. But at least it serves as a guide. It, it is. It is. You can always change it. As, as an example, I'm supposed to come here, but in the morning I have to go to see my doctor, and, and things happen, and all that stuff. So I made some changes. I had an appointment in the morning. I told the chair, "Why don't you come at 12 o'clock? I get this done." You make changes, but usually okay. But this is not the only part. The part is that from here you must learn to execute it. What can you execute in a day? Like that, we all have this. You have it, I have it. Everybody has the same amount of time. You don't have more, I don't have less. It's how you use it. It's like this, okay? Take example, income. You earn so much, I earn so much. I live within my income. You live within your income. If we can do that, why can't we do with time? Time is so all like that. No? Every day, you have 16 hours. Because eight hours you sleep and all the rest. So this 16 hours, we don't use it well. Or we just drag it. And you always think, tomorrow I can do it. But that kind of attitude takes you to the day after tomorrow. And you keep postponing it, not wanting to do it. Because it may be a difficult thing. But it just seems cost. post retirement or of the 55 birth, the last thing you want to do is get into a a routine like this. No. You want to live your golden years. Yes. This is not routine. This is what you think about you want to do. A routine thing means every day you do the same thing, you know. I am talking about something very different. Planning. Every day, what do you want to do? This is not your routine. You get up in the morning, have your breakfast routine. But just sticking to a schedule, that, that, that requires discipline as well. It requires a thought process. Meaning that I want to achieve that. I want to achieve this. I want to achieve that. I want to get this done. You, you continuously, yeah, you're tell, talking to yourself to make you better. Every time you do that, your mind will work very well. Which goes back to what we talked about in the beginning of the show, which is being active. Yes. Definitely helps to enhance your well-being, especially post-retirement. Now, a recent study done here in Malaysia shows that many Malaysians do not want, or for whatever reason, don't continue uh, having an active lifestyle after they retire. Yes. Um, and what they end up thinking is this is their time to prepare for, uh, for rest and relaxation and for their life to take a, to move at a slower pace uh, and mostly be at home. And this happens literally for that last phase for the rest of their lives. Yes. And this is what we're discussing today of how we can help change that mindset. Yes. So yes. while that's something that has been traditionally or conventionally been the understanding. What is it you think seniors, the, the, the seniors have in their mind? What is their perception? Well, most of, most of the people I meet who are towards that age have this perception, oh, I have done my part, now my children will take care of it. It's okay, but you must also have a plan after you retire, what do you want to do? People say, oh, we want to travel. I want to go and visit country. Fine. How will that benefit anybody? Aside from yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. Have a holiday. Go out and see. But what are you contributing? What is your life contributing towards this country? I mean, you have acquired a lot of knowledge. Whether you work for the civil service, private sector, whatever. You have accumulated that wealth of knowledge and skill. Don't you want to teach this skill and knowledge to other people? Yeah. Teaching. I mean, if you do not include, you know, take people in and show them the skills that you have learned, and if I can do it, so can you. What What do you think is one way we can bring them out uh, into back into the workforce, into communities, into contributing back to society? Absolutely. There are many, many places, companies that already exist in this country, private or even public listed companies, can actually take these people who have got all this knowledge and skills and use them in a way they will benefit from it and in return you can always reward them in some way or another. Mm -hmm. Many of the people at that age are not looking for money. They're not looking for money as in, you know, how much can you pay me, you know. Well, there will be some, you know. Leave them out. There are many who just want to share their experience. But we must create that ability for them to come. How many people? We must Find a way to do that, okay? The government only can do so much because they have their own commitment and whatever sure. they do. Mm -hmm. But people like me, as an example, I, every 
day, every week. I run free sessions now for people like this to come. And I talk to them and help them to think about it better. I'm not saying go out there and sell some products, though I'm not. There are many things you can do with your life, you know. Simple things, as I, as I was saying to you, you know. Skills are difficult to come by. You uh, uh, earlier pointed out something uh, interesting where uh, there is no present, literally. It's either the past or, or the, the future, future which we're it. constantly moving into. How does one prepare for approaching retirement, okay. that being their near future? <laughs> See, to approach this, uh, I started uh, thinking about this when I was about 20 or 21 years old, thinking that what will I do? Far-sighted man you are. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> what will I do when I'm 40, when I'm 50? And that's how I, he started coming to me. I started to plan this. So everything that I need to learn, for me to go to the future, I learned it. I spent a lot of time trying to learn about myself and what I can do. So with that knowledge, I equipped myself and started planning my retirement when I was already 40 years old. Mm. Meaning, uh, at, at 40, I knew exactly what I would be doing at 50 if I lived at 250, whatever that was, okay? So a lot of people can do that. All they need is simple thing, Lana. Just control the thoughts, you know? These thoughts that are running around you, control it. And then pull it down and say, well, why am I having these thoughts? There must be a reason why all these are coming to you. Okay, then you begin to examine. What can I do with this? Is there another, is there a way to do that, no? Like in my case, I specialize this question of time. I mean, time, to me was a valuable resource and you need to use it well. That was how I did Each one of us in our profession, whether you were a clerk or a teacher or whatever you were, you can do something with that knowledge and skill you have. But the, you must be the one to give. So you are in control of your own life. Exactly, exactly. Otherwise, getting up in the morning after retiring and waiting for the day to go somewhere, you know, uh, it, it, to me, it's a wasted life. Like, That's right. Uh, every single being, you know. Uh, we, you, you know, in this universe that we have, we are the single human creature that is more intelligent. The most intelligent being in this universe is ourselves now. With our intelligence, we can do anything. But we are not using that intelligence. That's right. Especially for ourselves. Yes, exactly. Take charge of our own exactly. lives rather than to be victims of circumstances, as they say. i give you a very simple example, okay? Mothers bring up their children based on their experience. But mothers, if they leave the children to develop on their own, the child will develop much, much faster. That's right. Doctor, before I uh, leave you, what uh, parting thoughts for Malaysians watching across the nation? I say this to them. Live your life, live it happily. Every day must be a joyful day. Every day you must go to bed thinking, hey, I've done wonders today. Let tomorrow be another happy day. Don't worry about anything else, you know. Easier said than done. No. But no. possible. It can be done. All you've got to do is before you go to bed, write down the things that you are not happy about. Write it down. Don't keep it inside your head because... All what you're happy about. Yeah, what exactly. What you're grateful about. Okay. If you can recognize the happiness that you have had and the bad thing that happened to you, or you think it's bad, but actually it may not be a bad one, examine that. You go to bed, next morning you'll have a solution. And perhaps here's a way to crack that code as well. Why wait till you're in your retirement? You can start doing this exactly. at a much younger age. You could, you could. I started teaching people when I was 19 years old. <laughs> so it's possible. I'm not saying some cloudy concept, okay? I started doing this when I was 19 years old. I still keep doing it. Mm -hmm. I will do the very day I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. Probably I'll do that and then go and die. That's right. So just to quickly recap, you say that the secret uh, to living positively yes. uh, until uh, your golden age is, of course, um, to exercise and um, to eat. also eat well, right? And, and follow our Prime Minister. And follow our Prime Minister in his <laughs> wonderful footsteps. Yes. But also to remember that at the end of the day, uh, literally, yes. we can control our thoughts. Yes. We can put that thoughts down to yes. paper yes. And, and review them. Yes. And see Absolutely. perhaps where these thoughts are driving us, yes. the right from the wrong, to have a better vision yes. uh, and clarity about ourselves yes. and the world around us. Thank yes. you so much for all your time, You're Dr. Venka. It's been a pleasure and here's hoping that you'll be back in the studios Please. very soon. Invite once again. me, I'll come again. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's all the time we have on The Nation today.
today. We hope that this show has inspired all of you, not just the older uh, citizens of Malaysia, but also the younger ones to lead a more fruitful and positive life. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.